nation's favourite celebrities. Oh, that is good. Paired up with an expert. I like that. And a classic car. Feeling confident? Uh... Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Look at you, you're really good. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> is it a find? But it's no easy ride. Hey, come on. Who will find a hidden gem? <laughs> Take the biggest risk. You got a tow truck. Yes, will anybody follow expert advice? I might have bought rubbish. Who knows? There will be worthy yeah. winners oh. and valiant losers. Come on, someone else, someone. Put your pedal to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Today's trippers seem very excited to be here. Sam, I'm so happy we're doing this. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. This is the fulfilment of a, a dream. A dream it? of ours. A dream! Sounds like they're good mates. Gethin Jones and Dr Xander Van Tulliken are definitely up for a bit of treasure hunting. We're a bit nervous about the antiques bit, aren't we? Oh, I'm quite psyched about the antiques. All these you said, things. Let's do this for the cars. I am into the cars as well. Are you into your antiques? I don't really know anything about antiques, but I quite like going shopping. I like a bit of pottering around in a shop. I like stuff. Well, that's half the battle. Presenter Gethin got his big break on Kids TV as Blue Peter's action man. Since then, he's done all sorts, including a stint on Strictly, lucky him, and currently hosts the magazine programme Morning Live, which regularly features a certain Dr Zand for all things medical. He's no stranger to children's telly either, explaining the human body on Operation Ouch with his twin brother, Dr Chris. But today, our two best buddies are out of the studio and into the Cheshire countryside. How lovely. Are you quite enjoying the weirdness of this car and this situation? I mean, uh, so much. What's it like as a passenger? You've got you, a lot of this room. This is wonderful. I, mean, I feel like I could just lay down on your lap. <laughs> 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 and have a little sleep. Yeah, your 1970s Buick Riviera is a bit of a big beast. Groovy colour, though. This is burnished bronze. Burnished bronze? It's nice, isn't it? You wore a shirt this colour. <laughs> I knew I'm wearing it. Like, Who's that shirt? I knew that say shirt it. became infamous with the viewers. I've cured so many patients. Do they call me Zander Healer? No. I wear one orange shirt. <laughs> Just wait till you see what your experts are driving. Woohoo! You heard that noise out of my bonnet! Yeah, you can't miss dealers Sir Hat Ahmet and Irita Marriott in that 1975 Corvette Stingray. Wow. Do you know, this was made the same year I was born. No! <laughs> oh, I thought you were younger than that. Uh, oh, thank you. Now, let's find out what they know about their new protégé. So, Zander, he collects 20th century British and Japanese pottery. What? So, I know. So, I'm you yeah. actually, your celebrity is an expert on his own. He's a collector already. Go on, tell me about Gethin. He loves anything to do with aviation. He's yep. got a pilot license. Mm -hmm. But I think he's going to be one of those people who will have very big variety of what he likes. Yes. I think they're both going to buy from the heart. Yeah. But I think they're definitely going to use their head when it comes to winning. Well, with expert help and a £400 allowance, we're expecting great things from these two. Uh, well. uh, once they make it to the shops, that is. Oh, no, hang on, there's an hang on, hang on. We're going to oh, go this straight is, this, this, Oh, look. Steady on. What are you, what are you all straight on. out for? Look at these tiny... <laughs> Tiny little Wait. European cars. Now he didn't Did, stand a chance. It's not a game of chicken. You've got to move out the way. This car makes you feel very. Um, it's not your sat. I almost saw what he was having for breakfast. You'll get the hang of it. This trip will see our presenting pair hitting the shops around the Welsh border, ending up in Wrexham. But it's the English side where they'll start today, near the Cheshire hamlet of Milton Green just arriving at Applegate Antique Centre, where their experts are already getting stuck in. Oh, <laughs> look at this be beauty. <laughs> You're, like, racing to get out. <laughs> look at this. Man. Gorgeous. I actually didn't think you could have a car that would be more embarrassing than mine. <laughs> <laughs> if that's burnished bronze, what's this? Carrot. <laughs> that's the motors inspected. Let's do the same to some antique, shall we? Watches and watches. You're a watch guy? Yeah, I'll be over here. I'll, you, you get over that side. All right, see you in a minute. experts. Yeah. I'll see you in a bit. 
Looks like Gethin's making a start without his. <laughs> but they're lurking around here somewhere. Sir Hat. Zander, you made it. I'm so excited to meet you. Yeah, me too. You're holding some ceramics, which yeah. is like what I'm into. Oh, good, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, this is your thing. Can we get going? Because I have yeah. a million questions. And 400 pounds, so let's go. I wish it was the other way around. <laughs> He's keen. What about the other fella? Arita. Hello. I love everything. <laughs> Is well, that, that a problem? <laughs> no, I love that response. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's so a... nice to meet you. I'm nice so glad you you're too. helping me. I'm going to need your help for sure. You want to get going? Yes, please. You lead the way. I, I'm leading the way. You are. That's a disaster waiting to happen. I want to see what you're going to be drawn to. Back to our newfound pottery pals. <laughs> no prizes for guessing what they'll be drawn to. Can we start here? Yes, tell me. Well, it's just a big old pile of ceramics, and I'm immediately interested because because I try and make a bit of it. So even the uh, even the thing that doesn't look good to me, yeah. I'm still like, well, but could I do it? How would it be done? Yes, Doctor Zan throws pots in his spare time, got his own kiln and everything. What do you think of that double-handled vase? Oh, really interesting. I just think that's so cool. I really um. Don't like this at all. <laughs> and, I, and I can't, I don't know if I can tell you why. Maybe the little eyes here or something aren't doing it for me, or the dots. I like the leaves. Mm -hmm. It's got something, it's not all bad. Do you know, I don't think that's something that we should buy. OK. I don't think that's going to do it for us. Not quite on the same page yet. What about the other two? I have spotted something. If you stop right there, I'm going to open it. Is there anything in there that might catch your eye? Oh. Who's your mate? Victorian Wilden type pig money box. What do you think of it? Because that is actually the thing that I like. It is quite cool, I suppose. Now, you've got to remember, it's made out of pot, it's a money bank, there is no other way in. So, how many of these oh. survived? Oh, I see what you mean. There's because no they would of... have had to smash it to get money out, of unless course. you ha did that trick with a knife. Did you ever do that Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Usually my sister's I. piggy bank, yeah, <laughs> not mine. You naughty boy. That one's ticketed up at £12. Oh, this, I like it. Are you happy with that? Yeah, are, are well, we going this early doors? Well, I mean, I feel like we've not had a proper look around yet. No reason why not. Stick that on the counter for safekeeping. Now, are our other two any closer to a find? Sir Hat, can I get your take on this? That is big and bold. Large swirl Murano bowl. So what, Italian glass? Italian, yeah. So Murano in Venice. Yeah. It's really well known. And if you, if you ever take a, a little break in Venice, it was the thing to do, to buy a piece of Murano glass yeah, okay. and bring it back with you. And I love the fact that this kind of looks like studio pottery, but it isn't. It's glass. It's got a bit of swirly potteriness about it, hasn't yeah, it? You definitely. can imagine it being ceramic. I love that the, the yellow sort of swirls onto the outside. I don't quite love it, but I can imagine loving it. The best thing is the price. Which is £48. Could be a potential. Everyone needs, like, a bowl to put fruit in and stuff. Yeah, you know... No one's going to laugh at you for owning a bowl. <laughs> People aren't going to go, why have you got a bowl, then? What do you need a bowl for? Bowl? Why has he got a bowl? <laughs> Does he have a plate or a board or just put it all on the table? It's like, this is obviously makes sense. Look at that, fill it with lemons, that'd look amazing. I think he's talked himself round on that one. Now, where's Gethin got to? How are you doing? Hey, bud. Doing good. Yeah? I've got a, a ride home if both our cars fail. You're such a child. What have you got? You haven't got anything. What, what have you done? There is one thing that I found that I think someone will like, but it's out of my... Like, it, it's not a thing that I would like, so I don't... It's fascinating, know. though, isn't it? Have you been upstairs, though? Yeah, go and have a look. I'm going to look. All right, I'll let you have a little. To be honest, I've got all the main good stuff, but all the best. Hey, enough banter. Back to browsing. This is my cabinet. Why? Well, I mean, watches. I always go to watches, timepieces. Yes, he clocked those as soon as he arrived. Why? It's got all why kinds watches, of though? Uh, what I, is... I don't know. I'm fascinated by um, watches. And um, I have... so, you know, I mentioned this is really easy to get open. Are you really clumsy? <laughs> Can you do it? Go on. Magic touch. Oh, okay. See, you Nails. always need a handy Nails. woman. Oh, whatever. That's years of antiques experience there, Gethin. I mean, if you want to buy oh. an old vintage watch, you know... Really? Are, You're not they're... reeling out? No. There is incredible market for it. If we find a good watch, I'm, I'm well up for okay. it. This was the one I was looking at. OK. But there's no price on this. Oh. We're looking at a Tissot watch, so a good brand. Mm. Nice face. Nice face. 
that's not the old strap, is it? No, so I don't think so. Yeah, that's, okay. been, that's been added on. But that doesn't really matter, because it's not the strap that you're buying. Indeed. You just need to get it for a good price. I want to know how cheeky you're going to be with this haggling business. Oh, I'll be awful at haggling. I just don't like the confrontation. I just want an easy just life. Just flatter your eyelashes and, you know, smile. No, that's, 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 that's going to put the price up. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look forward to. Meanwhile, our other pair are still on the hunt for that elusive score of pot. Sandra, I saw this from across the room. What this. do you think? Yeah. So this is exactly the kind of thing that I'm interested in, and then my friends would be like, that is a little swampy green vase. <laughs> so what's getting you about it? So the glaze, it's a Miolica glaze, and Miolica is like a, a tin glaze created... Oh, probably in the 15th or 16th century in okay. Italy on, and used on pottery even today. That, if I'm not mistaken, is French. It is just delicious. It's small, it's got these double handles. I think it speaks to your studio pottery love. It has a nice shape, it's difficult to get that, just that little swoop, it's yeah. really good. It's got a little bit of crackle in the glaze which gives it a nice sort of... Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel brand new. £42 is the price on that. Is it the one? You know, my thing was to try and buy things that I liked. Good. That's my strategy. So that's good. We're on board. All right. Go on. So we got... We, we're doing all right here. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go and have a look. Jackie's running the shop today, so best bedside manner. Oi, oi. All right. All right, here we go. Jackie. Hi. We love these two things. Can we start with the bowl? Sure. We really like this. Um, it's 48 Yeah. What's the best price you can do for us? Bit of wriggle room, take it to 45. That's actually good. I wouldn't want to pay less than 45. Like, this is, we're doing all right with this, aren't we? I think we? you'll do really well with that. OK, good. Now, the prized pottery. This is 42. Can you wiggle more on this? I can wiggle a bit more. Oh. 35. What about 20, 25? Is it, what about 25? Oh, I can't do, do that. You can't, I can't do that. I can't. Could you go, what if we went a little higher? What if we went to 30? Meet in the middle. Oh, that's 30, good. 30. Oh, please. Go on, then. <laughs> well, that's really good if you say please. Um, you're lovely. Thank you. True. £75 all in for the bowl and the bars. Good job all round. I am super excited about this. Oh, my goodness, then. And look at this. this rain. Already coming in useful. Come on, come on. £325 left, and that's Xander off and running. Back inside, the other two have that piggy bank put aside. Oh, yeah. And there's been a call to the dealer about the watch. Time to get your game face on, Gethin. Now then, Jackie. Ah. Oh, you've got the pig. Good. Here's the watch. Yeah. Did you get a price? £60. Pounds. £60. Pounds. The pig was... That's £12. Pounds. 12 And that, that's absolutely fine. Do you want to haggle on the watch? What can you? What, what do I? What do you do? What is your death, what's basically? Your, what's your? What do you say? Death. Absolutely. Oh, is that what you're saying? Rock bottom. No more movement. Yeah. So underground. You know, coffee. No, too much. Just death. Just, All right, death. just death. Yeah. You like it a lot, do you? Yeah. Fifty. Can it be forty? Can it be forty? Yeah. Forty. Can it be thirty-five? Wow. Oh, Go I know. on then for your cheek. Thirty-five. That's all you. You've turned me into someone else. A master haggler, by the looks of it. £47 for the two. Yeah. I don't want to do that again. Are you happy? That's horrible. <laughs> that, you were really good. I hate it. No, you were amazing. <laughs> the boys are natural, and he still has £353 left. You did fantastic. Thank you. Oh, look at oh, that. No, it's raining. Time to slip into the stingray and skedaddle. Meanwhile, somewhere out in the wilds of Cheshire, there's an enormous car in a tiny country lane. Sandra, how is it driving the Buick Riviera? Do you know what? It is so relaxing. This is like being on a spaceship. It's very long. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> now, time to gauge the competition. You and Gethin, good friends, work together a lot. Do you think this experience is going to bring out a different side of him. I don't feel like this <laughs> This is not going to drive a wedge between us, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm always cheering for Gethin. If he wins, I'm, that'll be fine. But he is a high-achieving guy. He is quite focused on doing well. So it feels good to be better than Gethin at something. We mostly want to have fun. Like, and I'm mostly interested in what's he going to buy? What kind of antiques yeah. does Gethin Jones buy? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know what kind of antiques I buy. 
I think we've established that ceramics might feature. <laughs> Taking a break from shopping, these two are off to Chester, a historic city built on the ancient Roman fortress of Diva Wictrix, where our pot-making doctor and his porcelain expert are here to discover that one of the things the Romans did for us is what they're both passionate about. Do you know a lot about Roman stuff? Not enough. I'm looking forward to learning something. The Grosvenor Museum is home to a vast number of Roman artefacts from dig sites around the city. The collection contains many pieces of pottery from the 1st and 2nd century AD and, with a few choice examples, is senior archaeologist Julie Edwards. Julie, hi. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah. This is very exciting that you've got everything out of the cupboard. I feel like <laughs> this doesn't normally happen when I go to a museum. This is our gallery on um, the Romans in Chester and it sort of shows how people lived and the objects they were using, both the soldiers and the civilians. The Emperor Claudius's forces invaded these islands in AD 43. Some 30 years later, the Romans established a stronghold in Chester, the largest in Britain at the time. And to supply the fortress, provisions were brought in across the empire, all transported and stored in pottery vessels. The Romans had originally come from the Mediterranean. There was quite a extensive pottery production and use for thousands of years there. So can you talk us through what you've got on the table yeah. and what we're looking at? So this is a large sort of round body. Amphora. So that would be, that's sort of like that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, probably about this size from the table. But these sorts of things were important to the Romans because it came in with olive oil, which was used for cooking. They tended to have different shape amphoras for, for the different contents. So you'd have wine ones, sometimes you'd have small ones for honey. So there's a whole range of foods that were coming in from the Mediterranean. So vital were these pots to the Roman army that they set up their own pottery just eight miles away. And they also introduced advanced pot-making technology, a piece of kit invented in the Middle East 3,000 years earlier but never before seen in this part of the world, the potter's wheel. They were mass-producing all these things because you can make far more pots using a fast-spinning wheel mm. uh, than you can by hand, which is what they wanted because they had a lot of people and the army needed, uh, needed stuff, <laughs> lots of stuff. Are we allowed to touch? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there could thought? be jars or storage jars, although I suppose you could possibly almost drink out of them as well. What strikes me about this is how light it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very, very beautifully made. The walls are incredibly thin. Yeah, it's very well made. It's been made by a potter who, yeah, who, who can throw very well. Yeah. Because they survive across the centuries, these delicate objects hold a wealth of information for archaeologists like Julie. They can tell us about trade and the spread of technology and even what foods were kept in them, giving us an insight into the diet of your average Roman in Britain. Can I pick this one up? Yes, yes. So that would be sort of late 1st, early 2nd century. Oh, that's so amazing. This is made locally but by a Roman, is that right? Probably by a Roman, or they may have... Um, like, trained up a local... Local civilians and possibly enslaved people. I think this is one of the most pleasing objects I've ever held. Like, it just fits in your hands so nicely. It's like a beautiful weight. You can see the finger marks of the Roman potter, kind of, as, it, as it's been turned. If you would like to have a go and see if you could make something similar, we have a potter here who, who makes replicas for us for our handling collection. That is literally exactly what I would like to do. That is incredibly exciting. OK, my pot will not look like that. But <laughs> we can have a go. No, no, we do know. It's all right. I can manage your expectations now. <laughs> I'm sure with the help of pottery artist Neil Glendening, our celebrity pot thrower can knock out a flagon or two, and for the full Roman experience, he'll be relying on foot power. There you go. That's great. All right. Oh, now. <laughs> this is much more work than I'm used to. <laughs> Normally, there's a little Japanese electric motor doing it all. Oh, it's so much concentration to do this and my That's... bum hurts more yes. than my bum normally hurts. You could always prescribe a suppository. <laughs> so now you're ready to uh, to start bringing up the walls. Perfect. Okay. That's looking good. When the Romans left Britain in about 400 AD, it seems they took their pot making technology with them. Potters went back to hand building their wares and it would be another 500 years before the potter's wheel would make a comeback. So when you're making stuff at home, what, what do you make? 
I basically make mugs to annoy my family. For, for like, birthdays and Christmases. Birthdays and Christmases, which <laughs> I, then, I then demand to know why they don't use more. Well, it looks like there may be a new range of items under the tree this year. That's, like, the hardest pot I've ever made. That is incredible. I think he's, he's done an amazing job. It's got some beautiful curves. I'm thrilled with it. Neil, thank you so much. That was the most You're enjoyable bit of pottery I've ever done. Magnum opus, Xander, as the Romans would say. Now, also bound for Chester, our couple in the Corvette. What do you think of the car? I love the car. It's definitely my colour. It, like, goes on forever. Zan thinks it's carrot colour. I like flame orange. Much cooler than the good doctor's suggestion. You're quite good friends, aren't you? Yeah, How long have you been friends? I've known Zan for about three years. We kind of knew each other before we started working on Morning Live together. So I see him every Monday and Tuesday of my life. I get a real brother Do you? vibe yeah, between no, a lot you of people two. Say that, yeah. 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 I think his brother Chris is quite jealous of that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Here's the thing: it's his birthday this week. We should find a present. I know. I need to get Zan a present, whilst yeah. also trying to destroy him at auction. <laughs> Very fraternal. Well, you'll have a chance to do both at the antique shop. They're not messing about with that name. Is this the next stop? Looks like it. Oh, I've already spied something. That I've was already... quick. Come on. I haven't even made it in. Come on. Look in here. Blimey. He's straight to it. There's no holding him back, look. Immediately drawn to the miners' lamps. My great-grandfather, okay. Gwilym Jones, he was involved in... Um, actually designing the little compartment that helped with the methane gas, you know? What? So, so it was sort of helped a lot of miners back in the day. It's true, working with his brother John all the way back in the 1900s. There won't be a ginormous profit in it, but I think because of the story and the connection you have with it, you just got to buy one. But I want to beat Zand. I mean, I love, you know, my family and everything, and full <laughs> respect, but, you know, living the now, it's about beating Zand, isn't it? His competitive streak is starting to show, you know. Now, this looks like something I've never seen before, which intrigues me. Oh, a thermometer. That must be some sort of a so minus a, thing. Yeah, not a minus lamp, but... Yeah. Used to monitor heat and humidity. He got very hot working deep underground, and heat stroke was a real threat for miners. I've never seen one. No idea what it's worth. And that's what you're all about, isn't it? Yeah. Find the unique product. Exactly. Which one catches your eye? Well, I think it's the blue one. I think that would be 40, 60 on a good day. This, haven't got a clue. Never seen one. But I quite like it. I think that might be the one. No price on it, though. Can you give me a leg up? I need to put it back. You're just as tall as me, and if I... I can't reach. <laughs> I was going to say I can reach, but I can't. So, now that's been earmarked, do I get a chance to say that they still have £350 left? Or that the shopkeeper's called Peter? He's so impulsive, that Gethlin. I think he would make an amazing antique dealer. He's got a great eye. Great confidence in what he's doing. I suppose it better not teach him too much or he will be competition in trade. Well, while you're still on the same side, let's see what else you can come up with. Can we talk about these? There's something quite nice about... Oh, a good weighty glass, isn't it? That's nice and weighty. Mm. I like it, but it's not the best I can see. Now, the two are the back. Yeah. What is special about those that catches your eye? Oh, hang on. What's in that? Is that a little coin in there? Yeah. Both of them. Oh, they've both got little coins in them. Coin glasses have been made all the way back into the 1650s. These two are a bit more modern, though. The ale one, the bigger one, is probably about 1820s, 1830s. That one, about 1850s. These are beautiful. I love them. Are we liking these? I'm really... I don't know what the price is. They haven't got a price. They might be completely... A... Oh, that's... Just... Listen, that's I don't know much, sound. but that's good, isn't it? That's pretty good. I would say anything £170 downwards for the two. That's, a, uh, does, does that's that almost you? half our budget. Is it a risk? I like it, though. Well, let's have a word with Peter about those and the thermometer. Uh, Peter, you have Hi. a lovely shop. Thanks very much. You have a lot of stuff in here. But we've picked out a couple of favourites. So we've got the glass 
Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, Hang it is, yeah. Beautiful. It's really nice. And we really like the... Um, That's very unusual. Yeah, the thermometer. Different. Different. We'll cut to the chase. Mm. The 2, 150. That's right. it, finished. That one, yeah. you throw that in, that's another 50, so it's 200 for the lot. Can, look, can this look over there? Oh, great. Yeah, we're, um, we'll take that 200 pounds. Brilliant. It's a deal. And a hefty one, half their total budget. Uh, thanks, Peter. All the best. See you All the best. Yeah, thanks Hello. very much. Bye. Bye. And with 153 pounds left... Hey, what temperature is it? Does Ooh, it work? It's boiling. Time to call it a day and for our experts to enjoy their celebrity chauffeurs. You're sort of in the middle of the road here. I mean, I'm on yeah. the wrong side. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I feel I feel good. And I, I like that you're on that side because you can make sure you don't hit any of those I actually think it's... Walls. I totally <laughs> agree with you that I'm sort of going to be dragging through the hedgerows. Are, <laughs> are you a good passenger? Depends on the driver. Good answer. How's it going so far? Well, it's, I mean, you've got to take it easy. I'm surviving. Surviving. How dare you? <laughs> Nighty night. Next morning, we're somewhere very dear to one of our celebrities. Welcome to my homeland. Yes, we're in Wales, home to male choirs, Barra Brith, and these woolly little chaps. Hang on, very watch nice sheep Betty. There. Watch Hello. Betty. Hello. She seems to be giving way to me. No, she's just polite. The highway code in Wales means you give way to sheep and always shout, Borida! Borida! It's good to have an ambassador on board for local knowledge, don't you know? Quick story about the sheep in this area. So their back legs are longer than their front legs. So basically when they're grazing, it's like less stressful on their backs. You'll notice now when you see when walking on the flat, they look a bit lopsided. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really had me! You okay. really... I believed you! I believe that till I was 14, but that was <laughs> delirious. <laughs> they love a good wind-up, the Welsh. Now, how did we get on yesterday? I'm scared to say it, but I'm feeling quite confident. Are you feeling competitive? No, I'm excited to see why. You... Why aren't we more competitive? I don't know. I think people want us to be, but I can't... I just love you too much. That's the, the bottom line. I think that might be it. Ah, oh, sweet! That'll all change at the auction. One thing that hasn't changed is the ratio of car to road. Oh, oh Heather. Oh. Oh, 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 sorry, too much, Heather. Sorry, bit of Heather there. Look, hey. this is too narrow. You cannot, you have to it's hit a bush. slow, man. You have to hit some, it doesn't get slow. any wider if you slow down. Just go slow. While they navigate that, let's find out what the experts made of them. Xander was just absolutely loving going to antique shops. Yeah. He's very, very deep when it comes to discussing um, uh, porcelain. <laughs> oh, Glass. you were loving that. You were <laughs> loving that. Gethin, he would walk in and he likes everything. <laughs> he was literally like, oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Does that mean yeah. you spent all your money on day one? Well, not far <laughs> off. Yes, it was a bit of a blowout for our Welshman. He got through £247 on a piggy bank, a wristwatch, a minus thermometer and a couple of glasses. Is that a little coin in there? Leaving him with £153 to spend today. A more cautious Dr Zand only spent £75 on a bit of Murano glass and a bijou bit of Majolica. That is a little swampy green vase. <laughs> so he's got £325 still in hand. Now, time for a more surgical examination uh, by the side of the road. OK, here we go. You excited? Flip that trunk. Whoa! Oh, is that yours? Look at this. This is Murano glass. Someone's told you this. No, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> of course someone's told me. <laughs> Made in Venice. It's a useful item. Bowls are useful. I love it. You can picture it in someone's house. Yeah. Put some lemons in, bananas. Oh, absolutely, yeah. What else? Mangoes. <laughs> nice. Grapefruit, yellow grapefruit, not a big one. Um... Hey, always encouraging healthy eating is Dr Zand. And what about Gethin's stuff? This is genius, my friend. So you walked past this and not even think about it. I indeed you? did do that. Yeah? A piggy bank, right? Mm. Coins go in. Mm -hmm. Where do they come out? You break it. Right. This one's not broken. So there can't be that many of them around. And the big thing at auction is, oh, it's unique, it's different. It's like the sheep I told you. Look, if I carefully place it down here, <laughs> you'll see it's slightly lopsided. It, pigs don't go raise on the Welsh hills. It's got one <laughs> trotter that's shorter than the other. Nice. There's also something in the boot that's not for sale. 
hope he's actually Did you make really that? Really pleased with it. Look at Sam, that. Sam, that's incredible. Did you make that yesterday? I was very pleased with it. It's mad how you can do I that. I could it off as an antique, it's but it's crazy. not dry. Or and you're so skilled with the pedal for that, but you can't drive this car <laughs> <laughs> if your life depended on it. Right, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Careful of my bars. Later, those items that are for sale will wing their way off to an auction in Penkridge in Staffordshire. But we're going all Welsh today, starting off in Langothlan. First stop, the Chapel Emporium. You can tell we're in Wales, can't you? <laughs> and having dropped off Gethin, here comes our bloke in the Buick now. Mind the curb, Xander. Inside, you'll find your antiques expert, who's already scouting the place out. Sir Hat, I'm here! Sander. Can you see me? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm smaller in real life. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, really good. Really good. Ready for day two? I'm super excited. Have you had a look around yet? Had a quick look around, but I want to see what you think. There's a few things you might like. OK. Let's have a look. All right, all right. They've got all sorts on offer in this converted chapel, and no small amount of it either. Good job, really. With Gethin way ahead in terms of quantity, you've got a lot of catching up to do. Sir Hat. OK. <laughs> okay, but look, hear me out, hear me out. So, what do you think? Yuck. <laughs> Seems rather familiar. So, look, I saw Gethin's pig this morning. Do we want to just do pig versus pig? Wow. Oh, well, they're quite similar. Gethin would hate you if that did better if than If I his. could beat him. <laughs> I think the pig might not be the way to go, but I'm going to take a picture of it for him. You're going to send it to him? <laughs> Here, look, get in, get in. Here we go. Say cheese. I love it, I love it. Definitely seeing more competitiveness coming out of you two on day two. <laughs> now, let's see if you can find something that will really upset the opposition. <laughs> what is that? OK. Well, look, it makes that noise. That's We've got to think about this. <laughs> Let me do it again. Oh, I love it. It sounds like money. It does. It says... O'Brien's patent, self-closing till. And that's lovely, isn't it? It's got it all across there. Beautiful brass mounts. I guess that's for the till roll. That you get a receipt, you pull the yeah. thing. Do you think there's any money in here? Check. I mean, it's so Just about that. There's something. But we can't open it. There's no key. Forget the cash on the inside. Look at the price on the outside. £110, yeah. I'll tell you what else I love about this. Gethin's things that he bought had a like a gadgety quality like they like the glasses rattled and the watch ticked and the, the thermometer had it it was they could all do something they did something and this makes yeah. a little ding which is like that's all i need i don't think zander's going to be leaving without that one now what else can you find so i once tried on a vintage top hat in a market a guy was selling them yeah and i really liked it, it was beautiful and I said, oh, what, can I get this? How much is it? And he said, you can't afford it. And I was like, yeah, I can. And it was £10,000. Wow. So he told me the factory in France that made the silk, the two brothers that owned it uh, had a row. One of them burned the factory down. And basically, people kind of went, that's it. We don't know how to make this silk anymore. And so a real old silk top hat is, are genuinely valuable. He's absolutely right, you know. Hatter's plush, as it was once known, can't be made anymore, so vintage toppers can be worth a packet, providing they're the right kind, of course. This is nice. This is old. Yeah. Battersby & Co. sound like a posh hat maker. What it's made it in France, which supports my... There we go. ..my <laughs> anecdote. Well, how much what is that? Box, but this says 40. Sounds like a no-brainer. I don't know. You're the expert. <laughs> I think on this one, I might be with you, Zander. All right, we're going to get this. Yeah, bring go. it. Let's chat to someone in charge. Is it Dave? Hi, oh, yeah. OK, yeah. we're interested in, in two things. Can we start with the top hat? OK. We think 40 is quite a good price. OK. We'd like that for £40. Excellent. Can we then talk about the cash register? 110 on that, remember. Oh, can we start at 60? <sighs> 60. I can't face, do face. that. He didn't pull a happy face. No, no, I, I, I can't do that. Can we do 80? You know what to say. Could we do 70? Go on, then. You sure? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. You're nice amazing. work. Thank yeah. you, that's great. 
Lovely. 110 for both. Dave, you're a star. Thank you very, very much indeed. And they've still got 215 left. I feel like I need something on my head as Put well. Put it on your head. <laughs> It'll be easier to carry that way. Oh, yeah, it's quite heavy. Now, somewhere out in the country, there's a TV presenter revelling in the land of his fathers. This is what it's all about. The roof is off, the sun is out. We're in middle of Wales. I could not be happier right now. Havrid, as we say in Wales. Havrid. Lovely. Come on, if you want me to learn about antiques, you've got a little bit of Welsh. OK, that's a deal. That's fair, isn't it? So, what's the first thing I'm learning? Shemai. Shemai. That means, hello, Arita, could come in handy. These two are also pitching up in Langotlan, but no antiques for them. They're off on a little excursion, swapping the road for rails. Park there? Should be fine. <laughs> this is the Langotlan Heritage Railway, once abandoned by the rail network, but brought back to life by enthusiasts. It's one of over 150 such train lines across the British Isles that have been saved from destruction. Hello. Uh, Hello. Two tickets, please. There you go. Oh, thank you. Have a good trip. Oh, look at these. Their conductor on today's service is the railway's chairman, Phil Coles. Thank you. Thank you. Just seven and a half miles in length, their outward journey heads along the River Dee all the way to Carog and back into the past. So, Phil, I know Stan Gotham from coming to the Estadbot as a little boy. So I don't know much about the actual history of the train track. When did it all start? It, it opened in the 1860s, originally to just Clangothland. It got absorbed into the Great Western eventually, and the whole line was extended all the way to Barmouth. A couple of full carriages today. Yep. Tourism spoon yep. at the moment. Was it always like that back in the Yeah, day? I mean, to start with, it was the Victorians, you know, the upper class. And then, as they gradually introduced holidays, we had a lot of working-class people used to come from Liverpool and Manchester for days out. As well as bringing in tourists, the railway boosted the local economy in other ways. The big improvement the railway made was the price of coal, cos it had to come in by pack horse or canal. Is that OK? And when the railway opened, the price of coal halved. And the other thing it did, the locals could actually travel yeah. as the fares became more affordable. Operating for around 100 years, this line carried passengers and freight up and down the Dee Valley. But in the 1960s, with British railways operating at a loss, the government brought in huge cuts across the entire network. The famous Mr Beeching came along and closed thousands of miles of railway line. This was one of them, and it actually closed six weeks before it was supposed to because there was a major storm and beyond Corwin, the line got washed out. So they said, we, we're not going to repair it. But all the track was eventually ripped up. The line lay abandoned for years until it was taken on by a society of railway enthusiasts. Slowly, they built it back to its former glory, reconstructing demolished buildings and laying all the track by hand. And like the line, the engines got a second life too. This is a Wickham two-car unit. It's the only one left in the world. Is that right? It has to be kept indoors, so it has to be kept in the shed. And we're not allowed to use it on children's events, because you get ice cream all over. The oh, is that here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is the last stop, Carol, for now, at least. A quick break for refreshments, and then it's the return journey. Make sure you finish those before you get back on board, mind. And we're really living it up this time, first class. Oh, my Ooh. goodness, you really are treating <laughs> <laughs> And it gets better, Gethin. You get to sit in the driver's cab on the way back. Not a bad office, this, do we? There are worse, worse places to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you volunteer? I've worked in some of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I volunteer. I drive these, help out with the maintenance on them, and I do a bit of station mastering at, uh, at Carrick as well. Keeps me out of mischief. Dewey is one of an army of over 600 volunteers working to keep the trains running. So, for our presenter, with his own pilots and HGV licence, do you fancy adding trains to the collection? What's uh, driving the train? It's straightforward, Dewey. Could you train me up? 
So is that a maybe? <laughs> If you if you were to join as a volunteer in our group now, yeah, it would probably take you about five years to uh, five years to work up to becoming a driver. Since its first proper service back in the 80s, it's estimated that the railway has carried over two million passengers. But this isn't the end of the line. A brand new station is opening very soon, extending the route. And thanks to those tireless volunteers and train fans, Wales's railway heritage is on the right track. Now, not a million miles away, our Buick boys are having a quick debrief. I was really impressed with your knowledge on the top hat. And you're haggling. I guess because I've spent quite a bit of time in Southeast Asia or in Sub-Saharan Africa where bartering is a bit more common. And I used to hate it. I used to be like, just tell me the price, I'll just pay whatever they say, I don't want to get into a thing. But I actually grew to really love it. Yeah. That was, what, TV work? No. The thing that I wanted to do when I qualified as a doctor was work in war zones, in disasters, in, in crises. And that's what I did. I trained in tropical medicine and worked in Sudan, in Congo, um, in Burma. That was a lot of my life. Wow. Wow, indeed. Well, we can't promise you anything quite as noble at your next destination, but I'm sure that your final shop in Wrexham will have its own set of challenges. Excited? I'm very excited. Welcome to Brinney Grog Hall Antiques and Collectibles Emporium. Over 40 dealers ply their trade in here, plenty for R2 to throw their remaining £215 at. A bit loud. At the helm today is Emma, ably assisted by Molly, in charge of customer relations. And, with so much to sift through, they split up to cover more ground. How goes it, Sander? I mean, I, I don't know what any of this stuff really is. This doesn't look valuable to me. But what's good is Sir Hat is like the Terminator. He can just scan a room full of porcelain and go, no, 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 and move on. And I know he hasn't missed anything. It's the last shops, there's a bit of pressure. You can do it, old chap. Out on the road, how are those Welsh lessons coming along? Hello. Shumai. <laughs> oh, so cute. Shumai. Shumai. Hey, talk to the local. I said Shumai. Yeah, to the Englishman. Shumai. Okay. Hello, how are you, he said. <laughs> <laughs> those two are also en route to Wrexham, but a different establishment for them. I have one request for the next shop. Go on. I want you to haggle in Welsh. That could be the home advantage that yes. could help us cross the line. Yes. Well, for your final bit of browsing, it'll be Acorn Antiques and Collectibles. Are you ready for this? Yeah, come on. Your last shopping experience. I feel like an antique getting out of that solo. <laughs> There'll be plenty of opportunity to stretch your legs in here. Two floors full of lovely things tempting you to part with your remaining £153 and not a macaroon in sight. But before we get going... I just have a message from um, Zand. I think we know what this will be. All right, He's go on, then. He's bought a pig. No, he hasn't. He's bought a pig, look. What is a pig. that? That pig's exactly it's like It's a money pig. bank. Look. He looks so happy with himself. He's copied <laughs> us. <laughs> He's trying to mess with your mojo, Gethin. Let's just focus on what you fancy, eh? I bet you can guess what I'm looking at in here. What do you think I like in there? Yeah, straight, I need to go straight to it. Speed indicator. I, I can pick it out, right? Yeah. A bit of aviation history. This obviously come from, you know, the cockpit. Yeah. You don't often see them on their own. It's got a little picture here of where it would have come oh, from. I feel like it's very you. Avro Vulcan airspeed indicator, 95 pounds. The RAF's Delta Wing Jet Bomber from the 1950s, designed to carry nuclear bombs, amongst other things. As someone who's interested in aviation, mm. I would have that somewhere as an ornament, just to kind of yeah. go, that's cool, you know. Where do you think you would be comfortable price-wise on it? I have no idea. I mean, that, that's not something that would ever be for sale, ever. Yeah. You know, it would come part of the cockpit, you wouldn't even think about it. Mm. So how do you even price that? One to ask about, I think. I'll keep on looking. OK. At least I know how fast I'm going now. Always handy. <laughs> Meanwhile, down the road, it looks like Xander is onto something too. He just needs to show it to his expert. Sir Hat! Blimey. I think they heard that in the other shop. <laughs> it's 
what I've got here is quite a rusty pedal powered foot saw. Now you know me in a pedal powered machinery. Ever since I'm like, yesterday. I'm like an ancient <laughs> Roman. Don't give me a motor, give me a pedal. What's attracting you to this? It has like a nice old fashioned like quality, like it's very heavy. I don't know, it just has a nice, it's got a bit of patina, it's got a bit of rust. It's got a price tag of 105 pounds too. This is doing it for me. Look at that, I mean, that's quite pleasing, don't you think? Yeah, 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 I think it's interesting. I think it's a bit different. I have no idea what it's gonna make at all. I think we should bargain quite hard for this. In that case, let's head for the till. Is it Emma? It is, yes. Hiya. Hi, nice to meet you. We're interested in the pedal fret saw. Okay. What's the nicest price you could do for us? I think the lowest I can go is 80. 80? 80? I'll take 80. Okay. Yeah, 80 is quite good. Yeah. That's nice. That's I really kind. Like, I'd buy Thank it for 80. <laughs> you are buying it for 80. <laughs> and that'll give him £135 left over. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. No right. problem. Thank you. And that's their shopping done. Now, at the other end of Wrexham, what else have Gethin and Irita found kicking around? I think these are adorable. Who's going to fit in those? <laughs> no, they're apprentice pieces. What? They're made out of leather and somebody who would have been learning to be a craft person of making footwear would have probably made those as their... Well, like a practice? Yeah, but a miniature version. Oh, they're really cool. Is that 1900s? I actually think they're earlier. I think they're about 1850s, 1860s. And they've been reduced. £68 now. But we can't get this and, and the speedometer. Get a best price for these. And then we make the a item. decision. You make the decision. Come on. See? Decisive. Come on. I love it. Go and see Dennis and try Gethin's new haggling technique. Dennis, now to. Oh. Do you also want to get a shot, Matt? I've been in Chicago. It was a deal got in Gathy after the five years you had established now. What do you think of that? I'm not sure that quite worked. You don't speak last, do you? No, I don't. You told me this would be a good tactic. <laughs> Let's try that again, then. Can I ask if there's any manoeuvrability with price on either well, of them well, that will help us? Should we have a look at this one first? 68 was the price, remember? 62. <laughs> OK, what about the okay, other right. item? Right. 95 on that. How about 74? 70, do you say? 74. Oh, yeah, did a four. If we go 70, I'll give you the cash now. Yes, 70 pounds. Nice one, Dennis. That's a result in any language. Deal come out. Superb. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Spot you. On. And with £83 left, that's all the shopping done. Finito. Let's turn in for the night, eh? Oh, Shemai! There's a dog. Did the dog shout Shemai? <laughs> no, he went woof woof. No, I think that dog no, oh, means Shemai. Shemai. I'm Get learning, ready. you see, I'm learning. Time for some shut eye. No star. What a glorious morning. Perfect for one last spin in the Riviera. Thanks for letting me drive, pal. Yeah. You could tell how much yeah. I wanted to have a go last yeah. time around. Yeah. It's a beast, isn't it? Yes. Today, they find out if their hard work has paid off and the anticipation is building. I woke up this morning. I was actually really excited about the auction. I really got into it. I was so excited. I was excited I about the auction. I was excited to see you. Yeah. I was excited to be in the car. Yeah. This is going to be good fun. Oh, yes. After hitting the shops on both sides of the Welsh border, we've headed across to Derby for a bit of auction watching, where the bells are ringing out at the magnificent Elverston Castle. They must have known you were coming, chaps. Hello there. Hello. Did you have a nice drive here? Nice drive. Very excited. Oh, are you? Can't wait to hey, see everybody. Are you nervous at all? Well, I'm He's excited nervous. and confident. He's worried. Oh, oh, yeah, good. good. Going up to Can't you. wait. Everything they bought has headed to Penkridge in Staffordshire. At Cuttlestones, auctioneers and valuers, where potential buyers are lining up in the room, on the phones and on the net. Wielding the gavel today, auctioneer Ben Gamble. Oh, we order. £85 there and we sell. Gethin got through £317 on five auction lots. Let's see what Ben thinks is good. The wet and dry thermometer, it's, it's a derby maker. Um, we tend to do quite well with named uh, sort of timepieces, thermometers, you know, all that sort of stuff. So there's interest on the internet, I know, but uh, should do well. Xander spent less, £265 on his five lots. Any standouts, Ben? 
little uh, hobby treadle fret saw, it's, it's just quite cool. It's, it's unusual, it's the engineering sort of quality that's gone into making it, it's, it's, it's fab. I, I think that could do really well, it's, yeah, it's just a good thing. And thanks to tablet technology, we'll be watching from the splendour of this grand gothic hall. Lovely. How are you feeling? Take my pulse. <laughs> 60 beats a minute. We're <laughs> calm. We're calm. Let's see how long that lasts. It's his big glass bowl up first. 28 pounds. That's a good start. At 28 pounds, what do you mean, though? What Made less of a loss. Come on. We'd like 30. At 28 pounds, it's here to be sold, and no mistake, 30. At 30 pounds, I'm bid. Are we two now? At 30 pounds, yes, no? We don't. Oh. Looks like it. We're no. sure. At 30 pounds. OK, that was unexpected. Yes, not so calm and collected now, eh? You needed to see it in real life because it glistened in all kinds of... No, you don't have to make me feel good about that. It's all right. Gethin's airspeed indicator next. Let's see how fast this flies out of the sale room. £30 straight in on my commission bid. On the book at £30, £32, 35 At £35, 38 40 At £40 bid there at 40 At 45 thank you, 50 In the room. Five. At £55, I'm bid there. Oh, well done, guys. At 55 in the room. 60 at 65, at 65. Sort of action that I would have liked. At 65, yeah. 70, and 5. What's the fuck are you in the Oh, oh into profit. Are you 80 online? In the room, no mistake, I sell all the 75. Ah, <laughs> uh, well done. 75, so you made a fiver. A small profit, but better than the alternatives, Zander. I cannot tell you how happy I am. That's amazing! <laughs> Now, have our two pottery aficionados picked a winner with this majolica vase? Let's start at an optimistic £10. At £10, I'm only bid, not £75 there. At £10, I'm bid, who would like £12? Like bid, £12. 12. On the sale room, thank you, at £12. Who would like £15 now? Come on. £12, I'm only bid there. It looks like it's all we've got anymore. £15, not quickly. He's thinking, yes, no, we sell. It goes oh. to £12. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh dear, looks like swampy green isn't in vogue at the moment. Two people bid. Yeah, but usually that's all you need. You need two people to go against each other and that's it, it, it flies. <laughs> We're up next. Your miner's thermometer. Let's take the temperature in the room. Internet's away and running at £50 bid. Yes! Five. Five. <laughs> at 50. <laughs> 65. <laughs> What did well, you pay? You 50. Like and five. At 75. Where's that? Lasco, 75 pounds. Very good. That's good. <laughs> I feel like it's a victory dance time. Another profit for Gethin. He's so hot right now. And it felt like people were interested in the thing you chose. Yeah. I haven't had that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time, Zander. It's your top hat up next. Uh, one size fits all at uh, twelve pounds. Come on! Oh, come on! Come on! At twelve pound, I'm only bid there at twelve. Come on! No, no, you can't do that. Fifteen. Come on! Thank you. At eighteen pounds, there at eighteen. Come on! Last chance. All done. Selling at eighteen pounds. Oh no! I mean, that's bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna get? Oh, I feel. I honestly feel for you. Not one of the rare expensive ones, then. Bad luck. I'm putting stuff out in the world that's <laughs> well, valuable. They're getting bargains. I'm spreading the love. Time now for Gethin's watch purchase. He had his eye on this from the start. Let's go in at 15. At 15, a money bid there at 18, 22 and 5, 8, 30, 2, 5. 8, I'm out at 38, 45. We're in profit! And 50. Wow. At 50 and 5. No, at 55. At 55, 60. Whoa. At 60. And five at 65, 70 at 70 pound bid there at 70. At 70, we're done, we're selling there 70 pounds. <laughs> That's a very good result. I feel like I've been winded. <laughs> it does all seem to be going Gethin's way, doesn't it? I think you've made really good choices. I'm just annoyed that I didn't make good choices. <laughs> Chin up, Zander. It's your till under the hammer next with its special selling feature. When you hear the cha-ching, you're going to think, money. People are going to want to spend money on this. <laughs> £12 to start. At £12.30. 12. 
35, 38. It's getting there. Okay. Like 40 now. At 38 pounds. Come on. Are we done? Dusted and selling at 38 pounds. It's brutal! It's like the amount of time and effort we've put in them two days and this guy's like, yeah, 40 quid, see you later. Not even that much. Oh, Xander, it's just not your day, is it? I actually was <laughs> quite relaxed and then it, and then now I feel um, like I've been mugged. Oh. Gethin's not made a loss yet. Can his pottery piggy coin it in too? Oh, nice, yes. What do you think? Surely it no. can't. It can't. No, it's can't make, no one wants this. Bids flying in on the internet. We had we started. It's flying. Then we went to five, and now we're eight pounds. On the Wielden pottery money box. Come on. Yeah. What? It's flying in. Twelve. No. Twelve pounds. At twelve pounds there. At twelve pounds. Short lived though. At twelve pounds. Fifteen. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 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 the world has gone bonkers. How much? Fifteen pounds. Made a profit wow. on the pig. <laughs> They've got the Midas touch today, those two. I don't have any joy in my soul. <laughs> That's it. Come on, Sander. Let's get behind your last lot. Pedal power for the win. You know how you go to a spin class and you. It's like that, but also you're operating a saw while you're doing it. So I remember saying to Sarah, I could make my nieces a jigsaw with this. <laughs> At £35. Oh, it's a start, yeah. At 35, I'm bid. All out in the room. Come on, come on, come on. 38, thank you. And 40. At £40, I'm only bid there. I've been bidding. £40, I've if you like. At £40. I have another. No? Come on, Mr. Oh. Well done, then. Going there at forty pounds. What was that? We lost half the money. I mean, yes. Okay. <laughs> but you're still smiling, Xander, and that's the important thing. I've got no regrets. I've got to say, we we loved it, didn't we? Yeah, you, you Even persuaded you me. You enjoyed the thing <laughs> going up and down. We loved it. No, you persuaded me. <laughs> <laughs> now, can Gethin make it a clean sweep of profits with his final lot? Those pricey coin glasses. We'll start in at twenty-five pounds. Oh. Two there at twenty-five pounds. I'm bid eight thirty. Two five eight forty. Sixty-five. I'm out. Seventy-five. Eighty-five. Ninety-five. One ten. One thirty. Whoa. At one hundred and thirty. One fifty. At one seventy. One ninety. Two hundred. At two hundred pounds. Last go. We sell. We show. At two hundred pounds. Bravo. This could be the biggest gap in the history of this show. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it was pretty decisive. I want to live in this moment for a long time with you. <laughs> and I think you would feel the same way. I have genuinely had so much fun. Mm. Except for this bit. <laughs> <laughs> you probably won't like the next bit either. Dr. Zand and Sir Hat started out with £400, and after auction costs, they ended up with £248.16. Bad luck, old bean. But Gethin and I, Rita, who started with the same amount, played a blinder. After sale room fees, they stand victorious with £439.70. All that profit goes to children in need. I would totally do this again. I would go antiquing with you again. Yeah, maybe it should be our thing. Do you think we're good at it? 